Class A coaches such as this Newell are real energy hogs. They love 50 amp service and we all go around the country looking for that classic 50 amp connection. But let's face it, not every park like this one has 50 amp service. This park in particular has a very unique situation and I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the service here using this dual 30 amp splitter and I'm going to show you how you can get leg one, leg two and 240 volts into your coach. So stick around and watch this video. Welcome to RV Squared, I'm Steve Vance. Today is a kind of a special situation that doesn't come up often. We have come to this park before and I happen to know that this park's electrical service is very unique. It doesn't have 150, it doesn't have 130, but it has two 30 amp services sitting on the same site. And with every Newell, or if you want to buy these, this is a dual 30 amp to 50 amp splitter. This actually isn't a dog bone adapter. This doesn't take a 30 amp service and cut it into a 50 amp cord. This is actual 30 amp dual plug that plugs into a 30 amp outlet, another 30 amp output, and it combines those two legs into a single 50 amp plug. So you'll get leg one and leg two but here's the caveat. As the saying goes, there is no free lunch. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between a 30 amp, a 50 amp, and in this case, a dual 30 amp. Let's talk about the most common scenario that we look for, 50 amp service. Now a 50 amp service actually will supply a coach with 100 amps. That's because each leg is powered with 50 amps of service and it converts into 240 to supply your coach with not only 110, but also 240. That means you can power up your 240 volt appliances, such as your cooktop, your aqua hot high powered electric, which is running on 240, and you can run your electric washer and dryer. There may be other appliances on individual coaches, but without having two leg service, you're not gonna have 240 volts, which means you're gonna lose the capacity to run those extra 240 volt appliances. So what does that mean? If you were on a 30 amp service, you're not gonna be able to run those. So you're going to get 30 amps of service on, in this case, both legs via an adapter. However, as I'm going to show you right now, that adapter is still gonna only supply your coach with 110 volts. And again, this is not an electronic or electricity uh, class but it has to do with how the prongs are supplied with power. So 30 amps real simply has a hot leg, a ground, and a neutral. The 50 amp services have two hot legs, a ground, and a neutral. So you've got full-blown dual 50 amp services coming into your coach. Well, when you only have a single plug supplying 30 amp, your coach is only seeing one leg of hot coming in. Now, via an adapter, that can, that can feed both legs of your coach, and so you're not gonna have dead plugs on a Newell. There are coaches, however, if you plug into a 30 amp, you may not get all of your plugs and all of your um, electrical goodies powered up, so that's individual, but I'm going to tell you that on the Newell, if you do have a dog bone adapter, it will supply leg one and leg two, and everything will run but you've got to be very careful with load management because it is absolutely possible, as I did earlier, to run a test and when all four air conditioners kick on, if the load manager on board does not handle that and shunt that load, it's extremely possible and in this case it absolutely did pop that 30 amp breaker and you don't want that to happen for a number of reasons. Number one is, it's just not good to interrupt power to any electrical appliance, period. Number two is it causes extra stress on the breaker. Breakers are not designed to be constant duty, on, off, on, off. It's amazing how long the breakers actually live in these high volume RV parks because they're not designed to be thrown on and off every day and certainly not to be 
tripped under load. The only reason why they do survive so long is because you're manually braking it. But if they were to be tripped constantly by overloading, they will eventually fail. Okay, super common setup, one 30 amp service. You would normally run your 30 amp to 50 amp dog bone as it's called, and that's going to send two legs of service into your coach at 30 amps. Now, 30 amps will supply you about roughly 3600 watts because you take your voltage and multiply it by your amperage. In this case, 30 times 120, that's about 3600 watts. So if you look at a hair blower, a hair dryer, uh, those could be up to 1500 watts. People who run toasters, coffee makers, anything with a heating coil in it, that can sap a lot of energy and they run anywhere from around 1000 to 1500 watts. So you can see you don't have a lot of margin in there to spare. Once you throw on a coffee maker in the morning, uh, certainly a microwave, which can also take 900 to 1500 watts, you're out of power right away on a 30 amp service. Why is this such a great idea and capability when you have a park that has not one, but two 30 amp services? We're able to grab two legs of 30 amps. So we take those 3600 watts and put them together and now we have 7200 watts of power. So now we've got a lot more energy to supply a lot more appliances, if not all of them at the same time. Now, you remember, these air conditioners can take 15 amps of power a piece. That's 60 amps right there. And if you multiply that by the 110, you're already at 70, you know, anywhere from 70 to 7,200 watts of power. And you're gonna have problems. So I would encourage you, even if we do this dual 30 amp, that you learn to control your loads by turning your air conditioners off or at least keeping maybe two of them disabled and that will just help your energy be spread out much more uniformly because as with all things, you don't want to use all that power. You want to leave yourself a margin of error. By using a dual 30 amp to 50 amp plug connector, you're going to take two 30 amp services into your coach. And with a 50 amp, you're talking about 12,000 watts of power because you're running 50 per side. That's 100 amps and 100 amps times your 120 volts, that's about 12,000 watts of power versus this would be about 7,600. So you've got a pretty dramatic reduction in energy, but it's a heck of a lot better than 3,600. So 3,600 on a single, 7,600, 7,200 on a dual, and then your 50 amp is 12,000. Let's go ahead and disconnect my 30 amp. I'm gonna plug the splitter in. We're gonna power it back up and we're gonna wait for the progressive box to do a full check. And then we're gonna take a quick look at what's going on inside. But first, let's walk inside and I'm gonna show you what the panels look like with a single 30 amp service so you can compare it as we connect the dual. So here we go. All right, notice that we've only got leg one and leg two of 120 volt service. We do not have 240 powered up. Let's go over to the silver leaf panel and check that as well. And once again, on the silver leaf panel, you can see leg one and leg two are indeed powered up with 120 volts on each side. And I'm pulling currently about three amps and one amp. If, for example, we turn on one of the air conditioners, I wanna show you how fast that energy can get consumed. So I'm gonna be very careful at how I control my air conditioning. So I'm going to, on this coach, make sure I'm in the now, and I'm gonna go over here to salon, and I'm going to press salon, and I'm gonna press galley. So at this point, I've only got two air conditioners going at once. Let's go over. Now I've heard both of them kick on, and I'll show you now that, as I said before, we're gonna be pulling about 15 amps per leg. So of that single 30 amp service, remember that 30 amp is being split. It's being divided by two legs. So right there, we are maxed out. And I'm going to go back. I'm not going to chance anything. 
I'm gonna turn my air conditioners off right now. Because like I said, I don't want to cause a problem because when these air conditioners kick on, when a lot of appliances, especially with motors kick on, you're gonna have a momentary surge that could exceed its nominal amperage rating. And that's the last thing I wanna do is pop that breaker. All right, as you can see, we've got the air conditioners able to run, but let's take a look over here. Uh, notice that the stove won't run, all right? So my induction cooktop, of course, my washer and dryer won't run. And I would not be pushing this AquaHot electric because these AquaHots on these newels, they have a dual electric coil because they can run on 110 and 240. So I could power up 110, but it will not enable the AquaHot to go at 240. You're gonna get a dramatically reduced heating capacity on electric 110 AquaHot. Anytime I'm in a situation like these evenings are about 33 degrees, I'm gonna run my floor heaters, which will run just fine, and I'm going to run my AquaHot diesel. Let's go ahead and come out here and let's kick off the 30 amp and let's connect that dual splitter. Now, most of you heard me talk about the progressive EMS box before. One of the things I really enjoy about it is it's testing your voltage and your amperage right at the post. You can't do that inside. You, I can disconnect my 50 amp and still be able to read my post, but it tells me right here I got leg one powered up with nine amps flowing um, and leg two, 124, three amps flowing at 60 hertz no errors, each zero means no errors. Again, leg one is 123. So it's actually testing how this is coming in. Okay, so let's go ahead and shut her off. I always like to get these connected so I'm not touching anywhere near those lugs. It just makes me a little paranoid to get anywhere near those babies. So I always like to get this connected first because I have a lot better control with these plugs. All right, double check that, double check my connections, get this all cleaned up and wrapped up, and we're ready to power this up. Now, I'm going to consult the display. It says L1, 123, zero amps, L2, 120, zero amps, and running at 60 hertz, so it's perfect power, all right? So, I just have to wait for this time to do all this diagnostics and it gives a timeout of about, I don't know, it's something like roughly like 240 seconds. Don't hold me to that, it's some odd amount. The transfer box, or I should say the progressive box has transferred the load over the coach and now notice now we've got 120 volts on leg one and two. We've got 240 volts on leg one and leg two. Our coach is fully powered up with 240 volts at 30 amps per leg for a total of 60. So now that we're in tall cotton, we've got 240 with dual 30 amp service. I've got 60 amps of service power coming in. That's roughly 72 to 7,600 watts of power, which means with 60 amps, I should be able to run at least two air conditioners very comfortably. So that's pulling 30 amps of power. Uh, I can run my microwave, my coffee maker, but let's go ahead and show you a couple things that we can do. I could power up my AquaHot. Now, the AquaHot is a energy hog. It's already pulling 60 amps of service. It's way, way, way too much. In fact, I'll tell you, it's probably gonna cause a problem. If nothing else, you're gonna get a voltage fluctuation. It may even cause the AquaHot to air out. It's just not a good practice. It's way, way, way too much power. So let's go ahead and throw our air conditioners on. And in this case, let's go ahead and put the salon and the galley on. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw the bedroom on as well because I know that all three of those can come on with no problem whatsoever. Let's consult our energy panel. Right now, we have leg one and two running with 13. Ah, there we go. The back air conditioner just kicked on. It's running at about 25 amps. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but it did jump up quite high as I told you before sometimes when these air conditioners kick on they can hit the service pretty hard so that's why I'm always reserved to have everything powering on at the same time because it is possible for these appliances to kick on and momentarily take a lot more energy than what you think they normally would take like it may be rated at 15 amps but that thing when it kicks on may draw 20 25 or even more 
Right now we're stabilized. We've got leg one pulling 25 amps and leg two pulling 13 amps. So we're golden. I also want to show you our induction cooktop is powered up and ready to go. And at this point, I'm able to run my electric washer and dryer. There are load charts uh, in the back of the Newell manual. As a matter of fact, they'll give you a load chart of all the appliances that are on a Newell. It'll tell you how many amps each one of those is uh, capable of drawing. Normally, these bigger appliances are going to run you know, anywhere from 10 amps to 15 amps. I just go for the max. I round up. I figure each one of these appliances, I just say, is going to take 15 amps. I can always be conservative that way to say, okay, well, if I've got three appliances running, that's 45 amps. So I'm already using 45 of my 60 amps. And I just know that that's getting close to my threshold. So I'll back one off or back two off if we need to run, for example, the dryer. So there you go. That's the summary of a dual 30 amp to 50 amp splitter. And I haven't really run into anybody that has had the opportunity to actually run that splitter, let alone know that you can do that. But it can be done, and in this case, we're enjoying the elegance of a fully powered up Newell with 240 volts. So I hope that provides you with a lot of uh, use in the future. I enjoy having you comment, so leave them below. I will also drop a link to that splitter in the description below, so check that. And if you need to, you can order it off of Amazon. And give me a like, and if you like what you see and wanna come back, hit the subscribe and the notifications bell, and it'll alert you when I release a new video. So thank you, and as always, safe travels.